The Just-in-Time Programmer No matter how far along you are in your software development career, or what technologies you focus on, there is one thing you have in common with every other software developer. You had to learn how to do it. Being able to program doesn't just happen. It's not instinctive. You can't fake it. Every working software developer had to obtain an education, though the nature of that education can vary considerably. To write computer software, you need knowledge. Knowledge of a computer language and of the platform on which you are coding. You need skill, the ability to use that knowledge to design, create, debug, and test your software. And while you don't absolutely need it, you hopefully have learned or developed judgment, the ability to choose the best approach to solving problems. That definition of education could apply to pretty much any profession, but software development poses a unique challenge, one that essentially makes that definition a lie. To understand why, it helps to turn to a passage from Lewis Carroll's book Through the Looking Glass, where Alice found herself suddenly running hand in hand with the Red Queen, running so fast they seemed to skim through the air, hardly touching the ground with their feet. Upon stopping, Alice looked round her in great surprise. Why, I do believe we've been under this tree the whole time. Everything's just as it was. Of course it is, said the Queen. What would you have it? Well, in our country, said Alice, still panting a little, you'd generally get to somewhere else if you ran very fast for a long time, as we've been doing. A slow sort of country, said the Queen. Now here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. That is the nature of being a software developer. Our education never stops. Just keeping up is a full-time job. Why is that? I don't need to tell you that ours is an industry that is characterized by rapid technological change. The amount of available knowledge is growing rapidly. The pace of change keeps increasing. There are always new languages, new tools, new platforms, new techniques. Release cycles get shorter and shorter. Software versions proliferate. But other fields change and advance as well. It's not the rapid pace of technological advancement that makes our career particularly challenging. It's the rapid pace of technological obsolescence. Doctors face a steady stream of new techniques and medications, but the people they treat don't change. Lawyers have new laws to deal with, but can rely on precedent that changes slowly. But in software development, one day you can be the world's greatest expert on a platform, only to see your hard-earned knowledge made worthless a few years later when that platform becomes obsolete or is replaced. That's why you have to run as hard as you can to keep up. Because in most other careers, if you stop learning, you can still be productive and earn a living for quite some time. But in software development, if you stop learning, it's not too long before it's game over. Your skills will become less and less valuable, and it will become harder and harder to make a living, to have a real career. So to say that technology is changing rapidly and that you have to keep learning is far too simplistic. To succeed as a software developer, you need to develop an education strategy. You can't learn everything, so it's important to put some thought into what you should learn, what isn't worth the effort, and what is the best approach to take. The rest of this module addresses the challenge of creating an education strategy. Parts of it may not apply to you, but I encourage you to watch anyway. First, because you never know when someone else may come to you for advice, but more important, because I'll be laying down some definitions and concepts that will be applicable throughout the rest of this course. This particularly applies to the first topic, formal education, that is most applicable to those who are considering a career in software development, but is also applicable to those who have been working for a while and are considering getting an advanced degree. Next, we'll explore the variety of resources available for learning and the advantages and disadvantages of each. Finally, we'll look at how your education strategy can address each of the issues mentioned so far. Choosing what to learn, given that you can't learn everything, preparing and dealing with advances in technology, and preparing for the inevitable day when what you know has become obsolete.